Let's continue chapter eight. Block A was administration and recreation. Alex passed a number of offices, then a blank, white tiled cafeteria. There were about 40 men and women all in white coats and identity tags sitting and talking animatedly over their lunches. He'd chosen a good time. Nobody passed him as he continued through a plexiglass walkway into Block B. There were computer screens everywhere, glowing in cramped offices, piled high with papers and printouts, software development. Through to Block C, research, past a library with endless shelves of books and CD-ROMs. Alex ducked in behind a shelf as two technicians walked past, talking together. He was out of bounds, on his own, snooping around without any idea of what he was looking for. Trouble, probably. What else could there be to find out? He walked softly, casually down the corridor, heading for the last block. A murmur of voices reached him and he quickly stepped into an alcove, squatting down beside a drinking fountain as two men and a woman walked past, all wearing white coats, arguing about web servers. Overhead, he noticed a security camera swivelling towards him. In another five seconds, it would be on him, but he still had to wait until the three technicians had gone before he could sprint forward just ahead of the wide-angle lens. Had it seen him, Alex couldn't be sure, but he did know one thing, he was running out of time. Maybe the vol woman could have checked up on him already. Maybe someone would have brought lunch to the empty room. If he was going to find anything, it would have to be soon. He started along the glass passage that joined blocks C and D, and here at last there was something different. The corridor was split in half with a metal staircase leading down into what must have been some sort of basement. And although every building and every door he'd been so, seen so far had been labelled, this staircase was blank. The light stopped about halfway down. It was almost as if the stairs were trying not to get themselves noticed. The clang of feet on metal. Alex shrank back and a moment later Mr Grin appeared, rising out of the floor like a vampire on a bad day. As the sun hit his dead white face, his scars twitched and he blinked several times before walking off into black block D. What had he been doing? Where did the stairs go? Alex hurried down them. It was like stepping into a morgue. The air conditioning was so strong that he could feel it on his forehead and on the palms of his hands, fast freezing his sweat. He stopped at the bottom of the stairs. He was in another long passageway stretching back under the complex the way he'd come. It led to a single metal door, but there was something very strange. The walls of the passage were unfinished, dark brown rock with streaks of what looked like zinc or some other metal. The floor was also rough, and the way was lit by old-fashioned bulbs hanging on wires. It all reminded of something, something he'd seen very recently, but he couldn't remember what. Somehow Alex knew that the door at the end of the passage would be locked. It looked as if it had been locked forever. Like the stairs, it was not labelled, and somehow it seemed too small to be important. But Mr Grin had just come up the stairs. There was only one place he could have come from, and that was the other side. The door had to lead somewhere. He reached it and tried the handle. It wouldn't move. He pressed his ear against the metal and listened. Nothing. Unless... Was he imagining it? A sort of throbbing, a pump or something like it. Alex would have given anything to see through the metal and suddenly he realised that he could, that he could. The Game Boy was in his pocket. He took it out, inserted the Exocet cartridge, turned it on and held it flat against the door. The screen flickered into life. A tiny window through the metal door. Alex was looking into a large room. There was something tall and barrel shaped in the middle of it and there were people, ghost like, mere smudges on the screen. They were moving back and forth. Some of them were carrying objects, flat and rectangular, trays of some sort. There seemed to be a desk to one side piled with apparatus that he couldn't make out. Alex pressed the brightness control trying to zoom in but the room was too big. Everything was too far away. He fumbled in his pocket and took out the earphones. Still holding the Game Boy against the door, he pressed the wire into the socket and slipped the earphones over his head. If he couldn't see, at least he might be able to hear. 
and sure enough the voices came through, faint and disconnected but audible through the powerful speaker system built into the machine. In place. We have 24 hours. It's not enough. It's all we have. They come tonight at 0200 hours. Alex didn't recognise any of the voices. Amplified by the tiny machine, they sounded like a telephone call from abroad on a very bad line. Grin, overseeing the delivery. There's still not enough time. And then they were gone. Alex tried to piece together what he had heard. Something was being delivered. Two hours after midnight, Mr Grin was arranging the delivery. But what and why? he just turned off the Game Boy and put it back into his pocket when he heard behind him the squeak of a shoe that told him he was no longer alone. He turned round and found himself facing Nadia Vol. Alex realised that she'd tried to sneak up on him. She'd known he was down there. What are you doing, Alex? she asked. Her voice was poisoned honey. Uh, nothing, Alex said. I asked you to stay in the computer room. Yes, but, but I've been there in all morning. I needed a break. And you came down here? I saw the stairs. I thought they might lead to the toilet. There was a long silence. Behind him, Alex could still hear or feel the throbbing from the secret room. Then the woman nodded as if she had decided to accept his story. There is nothing down here, she said. This door leads only to the generator room, please. And she gestured. I will take you back to the main house, yes? And later you must prepare for the dinner with Herr Sale. He wishes you to know your first impressions of the Stormbreaker. Alex walked past her and back towards the stairs. He was certain of two things. The first was that Nadia Vol was lying. This was no generator room. She was hiding something. And she hadn't believed him either. One of the cameras must have spotted him and she'd sent, been sent to find him. So she knew that he was lying to her. Not a good start. Alex reached the staircase and climbed up into the light, feeling the woman's eyes like daggers stabbing into his back.